I think that we're living in very exciting times right now. There's a lot going on, and we basically see it as a, as a three-prone strategy, if you will. So you have developments going on for your in-car experience, uh, but there's also developments going on for uh, the experience that you can have with your car even when you're not actually in it. All of that made possible through connectivity. And of course, as we add more and more autonomous driving um, to this mix, we will see even more new functionality, new offerings uh, being made available. I think there's many parts to that, actually. If we look at the in-car experience, basically, uh, we have partnered up with the major providers of sort of the, the biggest and most important functionality when you're driving. And it's important to understand also the context of driving is different from a smartphone. So a connected car is really not a smartphone on wheels, as some would, would uh, like to say. Um, it is much more than that. And it's also a lot about bringing the car to the internet rather than just bringing the internet into the car. Through that, we can then offer new, new kinds of services uh, and offerings, like for instance, uh, something we're piloting right now in the US uh, called Concierge Services, which is basically all about keeping your car fresh, um, filled up, serviced, and so on, without you actually having to be there, drive somewhere, or even give out your, your key physically. This is all possible through the development of a digital key. Those are great questions. Actually, if you want to see some autonomous driving, you can go to Gothenburg. <laughs> um, already this year, we are starting off with uh, 100 families, um, uh, real families, not just employees, uh, uh, driving around in Gothenburg with autonomous driving capabilities. Uh, and we've said that by 2021, we will have a full commercial offering. Autonomous driving has a huge potential to uh, reduce this risk quite a lot. We already see that the first sort of initial steps towards autonomous driving with all the different kinds of assistive uh, functionality that's available is helping a lot in terms of reducing risk. There's also connected features um, that are helping in this space as well. So last year we launched um, a function called Slipper Road Alert. So basically, as the cars have a lot of sensors on them, uh, they can then send that data over to the cloud. And if the road is slippery, and it could be ice, but it could also be uh, an oil spill or even gravel, wet leaves and so on, it will send that information to the cloud and then warn any other oncoming vehicle that's connected as well that the road is slippery. So even now we see that we are sort of helping to reduce the risk of, um, of um, um, injury. I think right now, since this is developing so quickly, um, I think that it would not be perhaps wise to wait until a standard is set um, or try first to set a standard and then do all this development. I think those things need to go hand in hand in parallel. So we need to continue pushing the limits, uh, testing out new things um, within the current limits of the legislation, uh, while also being in active discussions uh, with the bodies setting those standards and those laws.